Hello everyone, it's Steve with After Owners Club. Uh, a while ago, there was this article talking about solar-powered vehicles shine light on growing interest in ESG. And in this thing, they mention Aptera and Lightyear and Sono Motors talking about ESG. So I was like, what is ESG? And if you guys have been paying attention to the financial news over the past two, three years, there's been an explosion of interest and talk and news about this ESG thing. And so what ESG is, it stands for three things, environmental, social, and governance. And so what they want people want to do is rate companies based on not just their financial performance or their management, but on how well they do managing their environmental, social impact and their governance like how they treat their employees and how they treat their customers and ethical business practices, things like that. And so environment, they want to look at energy usage and efficiency, climate change strategy, waste reduction, biodiversity loss, greenhouse gas emissions, carbon footprint reduction, and then social, fair pay, living wages, equal employment opportunities, employee benefits, workplace health, community engagement, responsible supply chain partnerships, adhering to labor laws and the governance, corporate governance, risk management, compliance, ethical business practices, avoiding conflicts of interest and accounting integrity and transparency. So these all sound very good. Like you, you want, you know, who wants to support companies that treat their employees like, you know, like slaves and, and make workplace conditions dangerous and destroy the environment and pollute and cause biodiversity loss and then do unethical practices like no one wants that so these sound like um like like good things and this has picked up a lot of steam especially since 2020 it's been around for a long time but in 2020 is when it started taking off and uh, according to a study by deloitte about 50 percent of all professionally managed investments will be esg focused by 2025 currently about 35 trillion dollars are are invested in ESG-focused um, assets, and that that number is about about thirty percent of all assets under management globally. So it's a big thing, and that number is rising. And if you look at the, some statistics, about ninety percent of publicly traded companies, uh, and eighty percent of venture and private equity-backed companies, and sixty-seven percent of privately owned companies have ESG initiatives in place. More than three out of four small and mid caps have formal purpose statements related to ESG. Nearly one out of five small and mid caps are using ESG standards such as uh, from these groups. And uh, more than one in four S&P 500 companies have conducted earning calls for Q4 2020 cited ESG. So they, they, they mentioned ESG uh, in their quarterly report. So it's, it's kind of catching on and it's become kind of uh, standard for people to um, talk about ESG. All companies that talk about ESG uh, when they have their earnings calls and when they talk about business and their plans. Um, so how did all this get started? Well, it, I mean, it started with a lot of factors, but I would say the two people that were most pivotal to this movement is a guy named Robert Schwartz. He was um, an economist. He got a master's degree in e economics from Columbia and he was a Marine, and then he was in the Treasury Department as an economist, and then he got kind of kicked out of the Treasury Department during McCarthyism, and then he landed at this place called uh, Amalgamated Bank in New York. And this was an interesting bank because it was a bank that uh, was set up to help uh, the garment workers in New York City, and so they set up this bank, and they managed the union funds and the retirement accounts for these garment workers, and obviously, the garment workers are very interested in investing in companies that did not treat their um, workers poorly. So they told they they told um, Robert Schwartz that they they had very specific things. They didn't want him to invest just based on um, financial performance. They wanted him to invest based on um, you know how well they treated their workers and how well they treated their community and those kinds of factors that were not financially financial performance related. And then he started um, building a name for himself for doing that kind of investment. And so there were like um, nuns, groups of nuns, churches, and um, other groups that had some, they had some core values and beliefs 
and they said, you know, we don't want you to invest in like weapons companies. We don't want you to invest in uh, companies that um, destroy the environment. We don't want you to invest in companies that, um, you know, do things that they, that did not align with their values. And so he became pretty well known for that. And that's how he started. And and then that kind of came really to a head in the 1980s, um, towards the late 80s, when apartheid was big in South Africa. And there was this push to pull uh, capital out of South Africa to pressure them to end apartheid. And one of the people that were big in that was this guy named Robert Zevin, and he's chairman of Zevin Assets Management. And you see that you, they're a, um, they, they, they're, their goal is to like have social responsibility in their investing. Okay, so this is actually, because it's become so popular, it's become quite controversial. Um, people are like, you know, the these investments have no business getting uh, involved in this. This is quote, woke investing. And Florida pulled $2 billion from BlackRock. Now BlackRock, is one of the lar is I think the largest asset management company in the world. They control about ten built ten trillion dollars. So BlackRock has ten trillion dollars in assets under management. So Florida's two billion dollars is basically a drop in the bucket. It's like 0.01 percent or something like that of their assets under invest um, management. But it sends a signal. I think West Virginia. And um, Louisiana also pulled money out of BlackRock because BlackRock was uh, focused in, um, they were one of the biggest players to focus on ESG investment. And I think Texas has put out um, statements that their funds will not support companies that um, refuse to invest in petroleum companies or firearms company, things like that. Um, so there has been some kickback um, from this. Um, and the question is, is does this, does ESG work? Cause I think most people are, they want to, um, support companies that are good for the environment, good for their community, good to their workers and customers and have ethical business practices. Those all seem like good things, but does it work? Well, there's a lot of this greenwashing going on where people say that they're doing those things and try to make it look like they're doing those things, but they're just doing the same thing that they've always done. And there was this really good article from Harvard Business Review talking about an inconvenient truth about ESG investing. The they um, one of the core tenets of ESG, and I think Robert Schwartz basically made this statement, is like doing well by doing good. And so he was saying that by 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 doing these investments in good companies, you can also do well financially. Well, when they looked at this, they were not doing as well, ESG focused funds were not doing as well financially. Uh, it wasn't a big difference, but um, it was definitely worse. And people are like, well, you know what? Maybe you're happy to sacrifice some financial returns in, in order to invest in companies that align with your values. And, um, you know, certainly for me, for Aptera, like uh, I, it, the company aligns with my values. So I, I am like willing to take the risk of a highly risky investment to do that because it just aligns with my values. And so people are thinking that, but does it really help? And when they looked at them, they looked at funds of comp, they looked at the companies that ESG funds invested in and looked at companies that ESG funds did not invest in. And when you looked at it, um, the ESG companies actually had worse compliance records for both labor and environmental rules. So they found that the companies that uh, were on ESG portfolios did not improve compliance with labor or environmental regulations. So that's very disappointing. Um, and so they say that maybe this ESG thing doesn't really um, change anything. And it's just people greenwashing their own business, but they're just doing the same thing as always. And they said that there's some evidence that the companies publicly embrace ESG as a cover for poor business performance. So that seems to be a problem. In fact, um, there is this guy named Tariq Fancy. Now, this guy um, was the head of sustainable investment for BlackRock Investments. So this is this is BlackRock, again, the largest um, investment company in the world. Uh, Larry Fink is their CEO. And in 2018, he put out a pretty bold statement that companies need to talk to think about ESG. 
So where did this uh, state uh, ESG come from? It came first from this uh, this white paper put out by the United Nations called Who Cares Wins? Collecting Financial Markets to Connecting Financial Markets to a Changing World. So if you look at this, uh, if you go down here, if you look at the executive summary, uh, it is right here. This is the first time that this ESG was ever used. Analysts are asked to better incorporate environmental, social, and governance factors, ESG factors. And then this, this uh, term ESG is used throughout this paper, and that's when it caught on. Okay, so anyways, um, Larry, Larry Fink put out this thing saying that, that BlackRock is going to support this and that it's going to be an important thing. And they hired Tariq Fancy to be the head of their sustainable investment. And then in, let's see, August 2021, he put out this uh, series of um, kind of open letters to the world. And it says, Secret Diary of a, quote, sustainable investor. And he says, basically, ESG, in his opinion, does not work. And the reason that he says that is because he says, number one, ESG funds are just a way for financial institutions to make more money because they can charge higher fees for ESG funds and people are willing to pay those higher fees. So companies like BlackRock and other uh, financial institutions are just like, hey, we have this ESG fund. It has a higher load, but of course you don't care about it because you, you, know, you want to do good. So he thinks that it's a way for financial institutions to just milk more money from their clients. And then two, the scores um, that ESG, so the ESG scores are done internally or by these other groups, and they're very subjective and they may not correlate with actual performance in those regions. Um, and it's um, it's like just a way of virtue signaling. And his biggest problem was that he felt like it was a dangerous placebo. People thought that, oh, well, now we have this ESG thing, so the markets are going to take care of the environment and we don't need regulation or intervention. We don't need to do anything else. This ESG thing is going to let the markets figure it all out. And it's a, it's a market driven um, way of protecting the environment and, and looking at things that are important to us. And so we don't need to do policy changes or regulation or anything like that. Let the markets just sort it out. And he says that absolutely does not work. You, you, it, it just, it does not work. You can't rely on good sportsmanship and the markets do this because the markets manipulate things. So in my opinion, I think that these environmental, social, and governance issues are things that I certainly agree, agree with. And I think probably many of you agree with that. These are all good things that um, we should do. But this whole idea of ESG scores and ESG investing as it stands right now, doesn't really change um, well, what people do. Actually, there was a, a good um, podcast from Freakonomics not too long ago where they also talked about ESG and showed that what happens when the people do ESG investing, when they do the scores, the companies that end up high on the scores are like banks uh, and marketing firms and like uh, small uh, and like software companies because they just don't um, have that much environmental impact. They're just like pushing paper around. So they're not really using that much energy or using that much resources. So they, they have a good ESG score, but the world does not run on software banking and marketing. I mean, we need to extract resources. We need to manufacture things. And, uh, you know, like we need as much as we don't like it, we need petroleum. Petroleum runs a lot of things, not just cars, you know, like planes run on petroleum, plastics run on petroleum, chemicals run on petroleum, agriculture runs on petroleum. Agriculture is also another um, industry that has large environmental impact, but we can't live without agriculture. We need food and we need building supplies. These are things that need to be done, but those quote dirty industries have low ESG scores, so ESG funds don't invest in them. And so they invest in companies that are already green, quote green, by the nature of their business. But making those companies more green doesn't really matter because they're already green to begin with. Whereas you really want to help the agriculture, manufacturing, resource extraction, mining companies, you want them to become more green, uh, but you're cutting them out and then they have no incentive to become more green really. So that was another good point about that. So the system, the, I think the idea is good. The system is flawed. 
and the system needs to be either needs to be tweaked so that it accurately does what it says that it wants to do like it that it helps companies become more sustainable we all want that we would like uh, the resource extraction manufacturing companies to become more sustainable but the current way the system works it's punishing them and uh, there's too much greenwashing and um, just a lot of uh, lip service to doing these things and not actual change uh, to make the environment better and the social situation better and the governance situation better um, so that's just my personal opinion tell me what you guys think in the comments below thanks for watching guys have a great day